Since the pandemic started, 536 people have died in our area to COVID-19. Think about that number, 536. It's a number that we report almost daily and it will surely grow. But each of those numbers is a person, not just a person, a family member, a friend, a loved one, and so many other things gone. We tried our best to honor each and every one of them who left this earth due to the virus. And though this story likely comes up short, this is a tribute to those we lost. These are the faces of lives well lived and stories well remembered. All taken by a virus that we didn't even know about the last time they gathered around the Christmas tree with their families. Jack Beyer loved Christmas. He'd wrap the presents really neatly, like a masterpiece, but he would decorate the house real nice and all the lights outside and have him play the music. A loving father to his son Jeff, a jokester to his grandkids, a Vietnam vet, and a guy you just couldn't miss. He was one of a kind, he would do anything for anybody. He passed November 10th after contracting COVID-19. Just a day later, we lost Fred Saunders. His daughter Pam and other family members could not properly say goodbye. When you can't even talk to them, I think that's, that's really hard. Fred, like Jack, a Mr. Fix-It guy who at one point owned his own Christmas tree lot. He's just continually one of those guys that always has to be making something. Those maker hands and not quitting on a job are what Fred, known as Bucko to his grandkids, is known for. He's just left that legacy of, you know, just working very hard. Just a day after Fred, we lost Charlie Dyer, who, like many in our area that COVID took, spent his final years in a long-term care facility. Anything you said, he could turn it into a joke. Charlie, an army vet and proud grandfather, had a kind heart. He's pretty much known for making a friend with anybody. We lost Brian Smith October 28th at the age of 60. His life partner, Teresa, wanted him honored and remembered. The Packers fan enjoyed gardening and cooking in his free time. And if you've ever watched a high school football game in Rockford, you've likely seen Coach Steve Rosa. His toughness and his way of teaching football, I don't think goes out of style. Before he passed, Coach taught offensive linemen in the trenches at Christian Life, Jefferson, and Rockford Lutheran. You know, as a friend, coach, coach is that gruff dude. He's going to tell it how it is. Softball players across the state line remember Tim Parrish. The Illinois Hall of Fame stat keeper is known for his work on the softball diamond and on the basketball court. Tim was just a, a really loyal friend. Um, you know, we had some, some great times together at the state tournament. We go down to the state basketball tournament every year. He was one of those guys you wanted to see everybody succeed. Chuck Purin helped young people succeed on the golf course. He always had a smile on his face, took care of people. The Rockford Park District volunteer spent thousands of hours helping kids craft their game. If I can reach one child and change their life through golf and the golf, the characteristics that are involved with golf and life, then I would feel that good job, Lloyd. And I say, to Chuck. Good job, Chuck. We'll miss you. Just a few days after we lost Chuck, Rockford lost another community servant in James DeVoe. He had a passion for youth, underserved youth. Uh, James started the teaching gardens and he used those youth in the gardens and then also when we had community cleanups. DeVoe was the founder of the West Gateway Coalition and helped countless kids and neighbors in need on Rockford's west side. On the other side of town, Tony Artale owned a wine shop with his son. It's through that shop that he donated to local charities with wines and events. The comments and calls flowed into the store when he was taken at the end of November. If you take the time to read through all of those comments, you'll get an idea of who was and how many lives he's touched. It was pretty amazing. So many people thought he was a great guy. That same caring nature pumped through Kenneth Boswell one of the first we lost to COVID this year. And he's been nothing but the best husband a person can have. He's been the best father, best friend. His wife Gianna said goodbye to him in early April. Because of him is who I am today. My life like completely changed when I met him. Andrew Murray's wife, Tony, would say the same thing about him. 
we were married just shy of 49 years. That marriage ended in mid-October when COVID took the dedicated volunteer to too many places to count. You know, we, we embraced this community. We love this county. It's that love for our community that we will miss the most about each and every one of these people. We leave this final photo blank for the hundreds of people in our rising death numbers that we didn't cover. Consider this their tribute, our tribute, to a life well lived, taken too soon. And those were just some of the faces we lost to COVID-19. If you have a family member or a friend that you want remembered, email us a photo, name, and a short message to news at WREX.com. In just the last few days, about a dozen more family members reached out to us, wanting their loved ones remembered. Though they weren't in that news story, you can still find them on WREX.com and right here.